if you if you go to a restaurant and you don't pay the bill, you're going to get arrested. You do not go to a restaurant and say, "Oh, thanks for the dinner. Here's your tip," and then walk out like you know, "Thanks for the dinner." But you just said the restaurant. You're in an establishment, and so that's why I say people treat church like it's a dining hall, like a restaurant. They eat, they tip God, but they don't ever pay the bill. They don't pay. They don't pay the tithe. And God's like, you know what? You're you're cursed. You're going to be arrested. You're cursed. What a curse! Even this whole nation, you've robbed me. You've robbed me. And because you've robbed me, you're cursed. What a curse! You're under arrest. Do not pass go. Go directly to jail. You do not get a get out of jail free card. You cannot use the blood of Jesus to get forgiven for robbing me. This this is it. I'm calling you on it, God says. And and so that's it. Would you not, you know, agree with that? I mean, right. so, yeah, I mean, I just believe that if we're going to be blessed, we're going to have to pay the tithe, pay the food bill. You know, you can't pay for your salvation, but, you, you know, salvation is accompanied by good works. We're not doing the good works to get saved. Our salvation is our good works are a result of our salvation, you know. And because God gave us the gift of our limbs and our legs and our capacity to earn financial gain, everybody knows the concept that you are not supposed to be like those Roman Catholics, like I was telling you, you know, pay a dollar tip, you know. Everybody knows the story because at one point in time, a lot of people were either Roman Catholic or Protestant or and, uh, or whatever, Anglican, but for the most part, religious people know they give their parents give a dollar tip. They they learn that that's acceptable. When I gave listen, when I gave five dollar t- t- tip to God, I was not giving it. To, I was giving it a, a, a blessing. I gave five dollars in the collection place. My mom turned to me. That's too much. You're giving too much. I'm like, but my heart belongs to Him. And if he asked me for a hundred, I'll give a hundred. And it's not too much. You don't understand. I have a relationship with God now through Jesus Christ. It's not. It's not too much. Matter of fact, it's not even enough. You know, that's what my infancy when I was growing as a babe in Christ, and I was like, you know, five dollars is nothing. You know. But I, you know, I gave more than they give in a month. It's just one sit down, five bucks. You know, that's five services. You're gonna stand it out, Carl? No, you don't get it. I have a heart toward God now. I'm not running away from God. I'm not giving them a tip. I'm not slapping them across the face and saying, "Hey, bless me, bless me, bless me." No, I'm not there to be blessed. I'm there to bless God. So I, for the church to understand that we're to be a blessing to God at church, sow our seed so that we could reap the harvest through the rest of the course of the week. That's what it is. That's what church is. It's a sowing station. It's not a reaping station. Just in fact that you, you know, receive the word of God and you're reaping a blessing, is God didn't even have to do it. He said, he said, you're supposed to come before me with a gift. I'm not supposed to. You don't come to my house and expect me to give you a gift. You don't go to a king of Jordan or the king of Israel or the king of uh, Britain and say, hey, king, give me a gift. No, you dare not appear before a dignitary these days and or any days, past, present, or future, without having a gift in your hand for that king and that dignitary. It's an insult. So why are we treating our God any less than a dignitary would be treated? God says it like this in the uh, I believe it is in Ezekiel or Isaiah or Jeremiah, one of the three. I'll have to find it. He says, Offer now the blemish offering to your governor. See if he'll be pleased with you. And why are you giving me a polluted offering on my altar and you think that I'm going to be all right with that? Get out of here. You're cursed with a curse. You, this whole nation is robbing me. We don't honor God in this nation. We have it for 60 to 70 years honored God in this nation ever since Roe versus Wade and 
kicking God out of the commandments out of the, 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 the out of the college, church and state, misquoting what Jefferson was really saying. And he was saying that he was saying you should not allow the state or the government to dictate to you what you can or how you worship. It wasn't even a representation of the state being able to tell the church what they can't do. In other words, Jefferson wasn't even saying that. He was saying that quite the opposite. He was saying, don't let the state tell you what and when and where and how to worship. Matter of fact, that's why there should be a separation. But it wasn't even an official document. It was just a letter. But somebody got a hold of that, spewed it, put their own spin on it, and now it's this whole... It's not constitutional. It's just a person. No, you idiot. It doesn't mean what you say it means. You've just been taught something by popular opinion. That's all it is, is popular opinion. It's not even based upon factual reality. Jefferson never said what you say. He said you're taking his word and you're making him say something that he didn't say. Kind of like what the church does to the word of God all the time. Pastors all the time. Making the word of God say what they wanted to say to meet with what they believe, kind of like what cultists do. They take the Word of God and they make it say something that it doesn't say so that it matches what they are preaching, what they want people to believe, what they're teaching. And so people bend the Word of God to meet their, you know, to help people believe what they're trying to sell them, the bill of goods that they're trying to sell. And it's not, see, that's very dangerous. God said, don't do that. If you take away from my words, I'm going to take away from you the right to the tree of life. If you put, add to them, I'm going to add the plagues that are in the book of Revelation to you. So and if you want to ever actually read these curses and these blessings, read Deuteronomy chapter 28. 